John chapter 20, 19 through 31. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the mark on the nails on his hands and put, our, put my finger, I'm sorry. We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, I wanted to, obviously, I'm not Pastor Anna. Uh, I'm honored to help out and fill in whenever she needs, and she needs our prayers. She's going to be off for a few weeks, but um, I'm honored to be here. Uh, so if you would just uh, um, allow me to uh, pray before the sermon. Heavenly Father, please bless my words that they be yours, and bless our hearts, our thoughts, and our meditations here today that they may please you. Amen. Um, first of all, there's a humor Sunday is at St. Matthew's today, which I didn't know about until I, I went to their sunrise service. And also, uh, Pastor Christie is speaking today at Westlake, and they're also doing humor Sunday. Of all people, I thought I should do humor Sunday, but I'm not going to do humor Sunday because um, I had already started working on a different sermon. But I do have connections in Hollywood, and I gathered uh, rare footage of the disciples at the Last Supper settling up the bill. So that's what we're going to watch a little video here, if you could play that. Are we splitting it? Um, we'll just split it evenly. 13 ways? Yeah. We can't let Jesus pay. Well, but he planned it. It's his last supper. Okay, 12 ways. We'll do 12. 12 ways. We're splitting it evenly. Yeah. But I only got the Peters. Well, it all evens out. But you all had three courses. Can I just pay for my soup? Excuse me, we didn't have any wine. Well, I saw you drinking it. No, that was water. I only had a Sprite. Why should I pay for your extra avocado? Does anyone have an avocado? I literally had one spoon. I Thanks, Dad. Yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just found that very funny. Uh, <laughs> you think about the, the process of Easter and uh, finding humor in that, I thought was good. Um, so the title of my sermon today is, Did I Miss It? Uh, I want you all to congratulate each other on being here because Easter and Christmas are obviously the two busiest days of church attendance. And for you to be here continuing and being in the presence of each other and being in worship together is commendable. Um, so you showed up after the busiest days and I just wanted to congratulate you. But I want to tell you, when I was a boy, there was nothing like cable TV uh, we didn't have an ability to record anything. There were no DVDs or VHS tapes or 
streaming on demand, so to speak. And if you literally wanted to watch a TV program, you had to be there at the time it was broadcast. You had to be in front of the television when it was shown, otherwise you would miss it. And when I was a boy, these programs were broadcast only once a year, so the families would put this on the calendar to be in front of our black and white Zenith TV with three channels. And I remember those programs, like the Charlie Brown Christmas special, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Uh, they were only on once a year. And there was always excitement around that. Well, once a year they broadcast my favorite movie, which was The Wizard of Oz. Being born and raised in Kansas, we just identified with it. We all thought our houses were gonna get sucked up into a tornado. And it was just a really good movie that we were all very excited about. My brother and I would put on our pajamas. Mom would make Jiffy Pop popcorn, if you remember that, popped up a little bit. And after the Jiffy Pop popcorn, my dad would always do this same stern reminder every year. Remember, boys, if you have to use the restroom, do it during the commercials, otherwise you're going to miss your favorite part. My favorite part of The Wizard of Oz was when Dorothy and her friends got to meet the wizard. Remember that scene, the, the first time the huge head surrounded by smoke and flames and the wizard's voice booms through the hall and the cowardly lion is shaking? That was my favorite part. I love that scene. But once a year, as that scene was approaching, one year on the television, my mind started to wander into the cookie jar in the kitchen. I asked my mother if I could please have an Oreo, and she said, yes, but wait until the commercial. You don't want to miss your favorite part. But I didn't want to wait. So I went ahead and got up and left the family in the, in the living room on the couch. And I went into the kitchen. And frankly, I got more than one Oreo. And then I realized that you can't have an Oreo without a glass of milk, right? So then I got a glass of milk out so I could dunk my Oreos. And I, I needed to do that. So I finally rejoined the family in the living room. And I dunked my Oreo in the milk. And I looked at the television. And I saw it was a commercial. Mr. Whipple, don't squeeze the Charmin. That was the commercial. And I go, did I miss it? My mom said, see, you should have been with it. You missed your favorite part. Now you're going to have to wait until next year to see it. My mother said, maybe you'll learn an important lesson while you wait. You should have been with us. My heart sank in those days before video recording and on demand, I would seriously have to wait a whole year to see my favorite part and the rest of my favorite movie. And just as I was realizing this, to add insult to injury, the Oreo cookie that I was dunking broke off and fell to the bottom of the mill. I had to wait an entire year to see what I wanted to see, and I absolutely did learn an important lesson while I was waiting. And the lesson was, always listen to your parents. In today's passage, all of them were there except for one. And the one disciple misses it on that evening of the first Easter Sunday. And the disciples of Jesus are all together. And John tells us that they had locked themselves in the room. After all they saw on Good Friday, perhaps they were frightened that the authorities would come after them next. They were afraid and they were confused. And then Mary Magdalene had come back from the tomb and she came back with these strange stories of angels and a, and a missing body and a, and a gardener and it was all very confusing. So they were sad and they were scared and they were confused. And then they saw it. They saw and witnessed the risen Christ standing in their midst despite the crucifixion. Despite the locked doors, he spoke to them of peace and forgiveness. He breathed on them as the spirit. He was alive. And somehow they saw it all with their own eyes, except for Thomas. Thomas had left the room. We don't know why. We don't know where he went. We do know that he was not with them. And he was not with those early Christians in this moment of sadness and confusion and fear and because he was not with them guess what he missed it he didn't see it and thomas had to wait he noticed the 
the detail in John's gospel that they had seen the Lord. So Thomas declared that he would not believe it until he himself saw Jesus with his own eyes, until he touched those wounds in Jesus' body. That's what Thomas said. And then he had to wait a whole week. He had to wait the whole week. Monday went by. Taco Tuesday went by. Wednesday trivia night went by. Throwback Thursday went by. But he had to wait the entire week. And you know, it's interesting that the Lord made him wait a whole week. Jesus could have come back and visited them again anytime. But Thomas, when the Lord came back, he saw and believed and said, my Lord, my God. Thomas's profession of faith is important. Seeing is believing to him. But you have to be there, not rummaging through the kitchen in the cookie jar. And by the way, it was interesting that he had to wait. And I think there's something to that. So maybe Thomas needed to learn a lesson during that week of waiting. Perhaps there was a lesson that he could only learn by waiting. That's what my mom told me. Normally, we don't like waiting, do we? We don't like waiting in traffic. We don't like waiting at the bank or the doctor's office. We don't like to be on hold on the phone. I hate to wait for a parking space for a traffic light. I hate to wait for a line in the store. We do hate to wait, but why? I think it's because we feel like we're being controlled and that's just human nature. We love to be in control. And even when we pray, we hate to wait. Especially when we've been nice enough to tell God what we want, how we want it, why we want it, and we want God to deliver it on our schedule. In waiting, there is indeed a lesson for Thomas. And the lesson he learned while he was waiting, and perhaps that lesson was, if you want to see the risen Lord, don't isolate yourself. If Thomas had been there with the rest of the disciples that Easter Sunday, he would have seen the risen Lord. This is what Christian community is based on. When we show up in community, in worship together and gather together, that's when we are more in the presence of the Lord. We can still pray and feel Jesus with us when we're alone, but gathering together is crucial. And that's what our faith is strengthened on. And that's what strengthened Thomas's doubts in his faith. We shouldn't try to do this crazy, challenging life alone. This Easter season is the time when we also baptize new members sometimes in our communities. It's also one of the most attended days of churches around the world besides Christmas. So you being here says a lot. We being together today is important. Jesus was baptized and directed us to, to his disciples to do the same. It's a profession of faith. It's the same as repentance is the same. You get a do-over. A profession of faith and accepting Jesus as our Savior is what baptism does. It's part of a community when you declare to everyone that you believe in Jesus through baptism. You are becoming part of the community. It builds your faith. It shares our faith with others. Start all over again. That's the rebirth that's born again. The fact that Jesus was resurrected brings us together for a fresh start, a clean slate. Our sins are truly forgiven. And by the way, when Jesus was on the cross and they would be together in paradise, he didn't demand would the thief get down off the cross and get baptized first. The thief's faith alone in Jesus alone was enough. By faith, he would join the Lord Jesus in eternity. That's repentance. Repent means literally change your mind. In this case about Jesus, your heart moves from rejecting him to trusting him. That's repentance. And it's how you join him in eternity. It's our duty, also our honor, to invite people to walk with Christ, to make more disciples. It's our duty to invite people to the party, as I told the kids. 
Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I also, I send you. This is too good to keep to ourselves. You see, our journey of faith does not work very well in isolation. We need to have that walk to heaven, but not alone. We, we don't have to ask our questions by ourselves and try to figure out the answers without the help of others. Baptism and repentance reveals what we are as members of Christ's body. That's the church, not the building. It's us here in this building. You see, here in this community, Christ most often chooses to make his presence known and reveal the beauty of his love and change people's lives. It seems like yesterday, but 16 and a half years ago, Grace was baptized here on Easter Sunday. Pastor Ken Macklin, Pastor Chamey did a dual baptism. It was a very special day. And many of you were here. This church is where my family's faith has been strengthened and my faith is renewed so many times. Her name is Grace for a reason. Our lives... My life, my family's life, our lives, your lives, have been changed by being in this church together over the years. We may have missed it if we were scrounging around in the kitchen for a cookie. So it's important that we're here together. But let's talk about loneliness. When we feel lonely, we have each other, but there's many in the world that don't belong to a community or a family like this. Our society promotes isolation, not just from the COVID experience, but our screens and our technology. We have so many easy ways to escape and be alone. Um, just day-to-day -day life, video games, social media, Netflix, but it takes, it, it makes us isolated. The pandemic, along with our society and our technology, has created an epidemic of loneliness. Going on there is truly, you, you feel it. The statistics are there. Feeling lonely can have such a negative impact on mental and physical health. There's tons of data out there about people that are lonely or alone in the elder will increase physical ailments. Alzheimer's, heart disease, more likely if they're alone, they suffer, suffer much more. And the youth that are isolated on social media trying to project false images and keep up with who can get the most likes. Or perhaps they're bullied at school and they don't feel welcome. They're not part of a group. They don't have a group of friends. You see, when we're lonely, we turn to other things to keep us company, like drugs, food, or a bottle. I know from the men's ministry in the past that men are known, the common joke is that we won't ask questions or ask directions. It's the same in our lives. We have a tendency to stay isolated, and we, we need to keep from being isolated. Don't miss it. There is hope in this resurrection, and we need to spread that word. We need to remind each other. We're all human. We forget. So I want to lift up one ministry in particular here at this church, and that's the Stevens ministry. It is amazing and has done so much work and is still going strong. Out of their covenant, if you will, is we all experience challenges in life, times when we could benefit from the support of a caring Christian friend. Stevens ministry Ministers are ready to provide the emotional and spiritual care we need when faced with a crisis or a difficulty. And Stephen's ministry is confidential. Uh, identify those receiving care and what takes place of each caring relationships remain private. So I encourage you to remember that this awesome ministry is here if you need it. And many of you could probably be wonderful Stephen ministers. Invite someone to have coffee. Check in with each other. Pray together. Invite someone to church. Invite someone to the party. 
Invite someone. You may be throwing them a lifeline. Just that image of throwing somebody a line and helping them pull their way back up. We all need that. The easiest way to invite someone to church is to simply say, come sit with me. Don't have to plan anything. Just, just invite them to come sit with you for, for an hour or two hours if I'm preaching. But the world needs less isolation. We can start right here in our own little church family. We need to realize that there's not always going to be holding hands and singing around the campfire. Um, it's, it's just part of church is, is being together and inviting people to come. We believe Jesus rose from the death. He lives and breathes us and gives his spirit to us for eternity. And we never will be alone if we believe that. The empty tomb is the best thing that ever happened. It may keep you from feeling empty and alone. And if we show, don't show up for ourselves and for each other, we might miss it. Amen.